Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Thank you for checking back in. If you are new to the channel and you haven't already done so, um, consider subscribing. I do a lot of videos surrounding martial arts, which is what today's video is all about. Um, fitness orientated stuff, general advice videos, daily vlogs and so on and so forth. So if you are new to the channel uh, and you enjoy this video and previous things I've put out, then maybe consider subscribing. Right guys, so today I am going to address um, a topic in regards to self-defense that I have always thought and has been something that has been discussed in the news a lot, but is a topic that I have recently rediscovered and that is to do with arming yourself with a weapon as a form of self-defense. I'll let that settle in for a minute. Let's get into the video, cue the intro. So a couple of days ago, I was browsing through Twitter, as you do, and one of the things that I'm really interested in when it comes to social media is looking at martial arts accounts, looking at people's accounts of things, um, seeing people's successes, any, you know, if I can get ideas away from a lot of these, you know, social media profiles and accounts that can either assist me with my teaching or that can give me an insight into, you know, real life, realistic um, challenges that people have had to overcome, it, it can obviously educate me and help me when it comes to my own martial arts and also teaching as well. While looking through Twitter, I stumbled across a couple of tweets that I found quite alarming. These tweets were from people, well, based on looking at their Twitter um, profiles. They, they weren't people that were martial artists, they didn't have any experience. And to be honest, they didn't really have that much of a following and therefore the twi tweets that they had put out um, through seeing the interactions, they, they weren't reaching that many people. However, their tweets were in regards to events that have happened in the news. They were in regards to people that had been assaulted and the sort of both take home messages from these two t tweets were advising people to arm themselves for the purpose of self-defense. My, my view is that if people want to tweet and put out content on social media about events that are trending or things that are in the news, regardless of the topic, that's totally up to them. And if you are on you know, you don't share the same opinion, you can either respond to it or you can ignore it. It's totally up to you. The issue that I have is both of these tweets were actively encouraging and were advising the public or those people that could access the, tw the, the tweet, which was everyone, I could access it so anyone could, to carry a weapon on them for the purposes of self-defense. And the thing that frustrated me having responded and commented on the, these tweets myself were that neither of these individuals actually knew what they were talking about. I responded from a place of understanding of the topic of self-defense, being a martial artist myself. And so I responded to them and the responses I got back came from a place of um, ignorance, to be honest. It was quite clear that these people that were putting out these tweets and were advising members of the public to arm themselves for self-defense really didn't know what they were actually talking about. And when you think about it, this is quite scary because we have people who potentially have influence on social media encouraging other people to carry weapons on them. When you do that, you are therefore a threat yourself. If you've watched any of my videos, you will know that I do jiu-jitsu. Um, I am a first degree black belt, so by no means am I an, a complete expert in my field. However, through the last nine years of training as uh, you know in jiu-jitsu i have come to experience um some genuine threats on the map and this doesn't mean that this these aren't controlled threats because they are controlled but when you are up against people trying to attack you especially at senior levels there is um there isn't that boundary as such and so i have dealt with you know people attacking me by punching grabbing weapons all kinds of different things a lot of the time it goes wrong and that's the whole purpose in training so that you can try and perfect it so if it did ever happen in real life you would stand the best chance of staying safe and through training in this way and through upping the intensity and trying to improve my technique 
and improve my ability to defend myself, I've come to realize, and this sounds quite cliche, that the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. And the harder I, and the more intense I train, and obviously that, uh, you know, the further I go, the more intense it's gonna get, the more scary self-defense becomes. And when you increase the intensity, you start to lose an element of control and you have to try and fight to, to maintain that. And that's where it starts to become quite scary. In a realistic situation, you have very little control. You're potentially in a secluded, a secluded place. Um, yeah, there might be other factors involved, such as alcohol and drugs, not necessarily on your part, but on theirs. All of a sudden, there is no limit. There's no one saying, right, stop, that's enough. We've gone too far. And it can become very, very dangerous very, very quickly. Now, in one of the responses to one of these tweets, I mentioned that obviously I don't agree that carrying a weapon is suitable for self-defense. I see no benefit in it whatsoever. And when asked if I had any suggestions, my, my number one thing was situational awareness, okay? And I think that's probably the biggest and most important thing when it comes to being able to defend yourself, is being aware of what's going on around you. And it's, um, it amazes me, and you see all these videos of people on their phones falling into ponds and tripping over stuff, it amazes me how oblivious mo the average member of the public are to their surroundings. I'm so aware of potential threats that I go into a venue and without consciously doing so, I'm checking out people as I walk into the event or the venue. I'm looking at where the doors are, I'm looking at the exits, and I'm not doing it because I'm like wired and I'm sort of like, oh my God, something's gonna happen. It just is automatic. I'm just aware of my surroundings. And I think that that is something that a lot of people lack. And when you lack that, silly things like getting into, a, taking a cab with someone that you've never met before, um, you know, going home with someone that you, you know, you met t two hours ago, uh, walking down alleyways in at night rather than taking the main public roads. Things like this people do because they're unaware of the potential threat and they're unaware of their, their surroundings. And that is most likely when these occurrences happen. Now I am very aware that this isn't always a black and white topic and there are certain social circumstances such as, uh, you know, it's well known in the UK that knife crime, especially in the major cities, is, is, is an issue and there are lots of gang related and drug related issues and people feel the need to carry a knife on them or a weapon on them for the purpose of self-defense because everyone else in rival gangs, for instance, is also armed. And that is something that I'm not very experienced with, but nonetheless, you are still an automatic weapon and an automatic threat when you have got something concealed on you that you can use to cause some serious harm. And in a self-defense perspective, if we're ignoring the gang-related stuff, that still doesn't have a place. Now, last night I uh, was training with my club, uh, my jiu-jitsu club, and I thought I would test the waters when it came to knife work and i've done quite a lot of work with knives um be, you know in training anyway but i thought i would test the waters as an example to you guys how um just using knives as an example how tricky it can be when you are dealing with someone with a knife and um i have set up three different scenarios one is a very simple gentle knife attack to show you a a sort of a simple technique that one might be taught if you turned up to a martial arts session. Second is from a little bit of a resistant opponent, someone who is actually trying to stab you, but without, you know, trying to deliberately cut you up. They just, you know, they poke a knife out and they try to jab you with it. And the last one is against someone who is actually trying to assault you, actually trying to stab you and is resisting and is sort of trying to stab you and is like, you know, trying to cut you in any way they can. And you should be able to see a clear difference in my response to that threat um, and the the ease in which I'm able to deal with the, this person. So um, the first one is going to be the easy attack. So let's roll the video. <laughs> Stripping away. Now, as you can see from the clip, um, I was training with, with one of my students called Pete and he had a weapon with him, he had a, he had a plastic knife, and he was simply just striking it towards my sort of upper body, my chest and above. Um, the threat was real, because if that was a knife, it would still stab me, it would cause me serious harm, 
but the intensity behind the attack wasn't there and I was merely demonstrating how I could mobilize him, take his balance and you know disarm him using a simple wrist lock. The reality is, is this is not what will happen in the street in the slightest. This is more from a martial arts perspective, learning how to apply a wrist lock and doing it from the perspective of having a weapon. Now the next clip is um, also of Pete trying to attack me. The only difference is rather than just going with the flow and allowing me to apply a wrist lock, um, he is just trying to stab me. Nothing tricky to it, one clear stab, but he's actually trying to dig me in. Right, let's clear you that clip. Okay, so now you can see that I can no longer just take the balance, move him in a certain position and apply the lock because the moment that someone is trying to actually stab you, okay, their wrist and their elbow starts to lock out because they're, you know, they're fully extended. They don't want you to do anything to them. It's a clear, I'm going to stab you. And I had to adjust my technique in order to deal with that. And the challenge and the intensity was higher. And so the technique wasn't as clean. And all of a sudden I was fighting a little bit more with the with, with Pete because he was not wanting to really give me his arm and therefore it became a bit more of a tussle and therefore less safe. Now let's get into the part of the, the video where you see me actually having to struggle with someone, with Pete in this case, where he doesn't want me to have the knife, he's actually trying to cut me. This is like a slightly more realistic assault. Now, there, you can take this further, but I thought I'd stop at this video because you can see the challenge and the difference from the first video to the last. So let's roll that video clip and you can see how I struggle to, to disarm Pete and the knife. Stab me, but not like necessarily like he's gonna sort of play around, taunt me a little bit. And if I go in for it, he might pull out, okay? And, and then I might go in, okay? And then when I go in, I have to make sure so there you go guys, um, as you can see from that last video, I 100% got cut, um, or I would have done had that have been a real knife, and again, that was still quite a nice stabbing, believe it or not. Um, if someone really wanted to cause you harm and they knew what they were doing with the knife, then they, they would cut you. If ever you have any suspect, any slight slither of a, a doubt that this person has got a weapon on them, you should get as far away from them as possible. And if anyone does put a knife out on you and you try to defend yourself because you're backed into a corner, um, there's, a, there's a very high chance that you're gonna get cut. And if you know how to defend yourself, it's less about trying to not get cut and more about trying to reduce the risk of, of the injury and the severity of that injury. And most people who don't know anything about martial arts and self-defense might seem completely bizarre, but when you are actually having to engage with someone who has a sharp weapon like that, regardless of what the movies show, there is an incredibly high chance that you're gonna get cut and your, your number one aspect should be preservation of life. And so as you can see from my perspective, if you were to therefore arm yourself, this is no longer self-defense. If someone tries to attack you and you stab them, you are just assaulting them. In order to protect yourself appropriately, you need to have that spatial awareness. You need to be aware of your surroundings in order to effectively defend yourself. And I know many martial artists that would actually consider themselves to have failed if they have to have a physical altercation. There you go. Um, I, I felt like I wanted to, to share that with you and if there is any take home message from this, it is do not carry a weapon on you under any circumstances. Um, knives and any other weapons are designed for cooking. <laughs> um, craftsmanship, they're not designed as a method, unless you're in the forces for instance. They're not designed um, first and foremost to be used as a method of self-defense. If you need, if you want to take anything, you know, alarms, uh, rape alarms, for instance, are great because they're loud, they're they're a horrible piercing sound, and they alert people to to the noise. Um, and if needs be, and I don't really see these so much in the UK, but pepper spray or mace, because if someone is trying to attack you, you basically temporarily blind them, and you can get out of there. But ultimately, the biggest way to defend yourself is to not be in the situation in the first place and to stay safe. There we go, guys. Though, though that was my, my view on this topic. And obviously, I wanted to show you the clips of me trying to defend myself in a controlled environment um, to show you and to give you an insight into what it could potentially look like in an uncontrolled environment with a real knife. It would obviously be much worse. 
So there you go. That was that was my view on it, and I, I felt like this was something I needed to get off my chest. Uh, and to advise you guys to, to take this this situation a little bit more seriously. And if you do see tweets and people on social media talking about these kind of things, to take it with a pinch of salt and to think a bit more carefully about this topic. Right, I'm gonna wrap the video up there, guys. If you like the video, please smash that like button. Um, please, if you have any views or if you've experienced anything like this before, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to be able to uh, have a discussion with you guys about it. And if you've got any questions about self-defense that you want to know, again, please leave a comment down below. Uh, and as at the beginning, if you are interested in any of this, this the stuff I'm putting out, any of my content, consider subscribing. And if you hit that bell notification, naturally you will be alerted every time I upload. Right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to head out. See you guys next time. Bye.